An increasing number of individuals are downsizing by moving into tiny homes or even exploring van life. So today we're going to look at different options for sewing in a small space. Those options are to either stick with a standard size sewing machine or to get something smaller for easier travel. I'll leave timestamps to both options down in the description box below so you can skip around this video if need be. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell to receive updates. Your space might be small, but it doesn't mean that your sewing machine has to be. So let's take a look at some ways that people have made regular machines work in their small spaces. The first setup that you're looking at is actually my personal setup. I have my sewing machine set up in a guest bedroom in a small corner and this Singer 66 table that my dad found in an estate sale works perfectly for this particular situation because it does fold out so that I can cut fabric and all sorts of things without having to take up too much room. This of course won't work for van life, but it will work for a tiny home. Let's take a look at the tiny home sewing space of a lady named Denise. She was featured on Tiny House Expedition and also on Tiny House Giant Journey. In this corner, we also have my sewing table. I'd love to have a separate sewing studio, but that's not in the cards in this moment. It's coming, I'm manifesting it. <laughs> but for now, I made the best out of living and working in this space. And so I have the table that every tiny house owner has. Uh, I purchased it at Ikea. It's a solid wood table with six drawers on each side. So this is the Norden table from Ikea. It is not all solid wood. The tabletop, drop leaf, drawer front, drawer back, and under frame are solid birch, but the drawer side is fiberboard with a birch veneer. And then the drawer bottom is also fiberboard. I just thought that would be something really important to mention. And also at the time of this recording, the Norton table cost $349.99. That is a bit higher in price than what it was when it first released. But there are other options to getting this table, like making a DIY table for yourself. And there are plans for making the table for yourself over on Etsy. And I will leave a link to those down in the description box below. This very small clip comes from a show called Teeny House Nation and the episode features Elizabeth and Peter's tiny loft. Let's take a look at it. Your banjo! <laughs> oh, look at the sewing machine down there. Oh, man. This looks like either a entryway table or a plant stand. I think this is an excellent idea for storing your machine when it is not in use, especially in like a van life situation or even in a tiny home situation because you can store your machine there and then take it to your main kitchen table in order to be able to sew. So this works well. Now let's take a look at the tiny sewing machines which are more favorable for a tiny space. Of course, the most well-known mini sewing machine is the Singer Featherweight. The Singer Featherweight weighs in at 11 pounds and four ounces. It has very, very small dimensions, which I will put up here on screen. And it also comes in a very, very small case, even though the sizes vary a bit, depending on what model year you got. Um, this is a bit of a side note, but the Featherweight doesn't just come in black, but it comes in tan and white and also a crinkle finish. And then too, there's a lot of people that have repainted their machines to match automotive colors. And that's just a real, real fun option, but expensive. Um, the machines are very expensive uh, because there is a high demand for them, but there are a lot of other great options that are often overlooked in the marketplace. Cast iron sewing machines are so much heavier than their aluminum body counterparts like the Singer Featherweight. However, these machines are often small and compact and roughly the same dimensions as the Singer Featherweight, so they still can be an option for someone. The first model that I think about is the Morse 221, and I think about it because its number, 221, is the same as what you find on the Singer Featherweight. Uh, this machine is both a straight stitch and a zigzag and a great option for someone. It does weigh 25.4 pounds, but it's not too bad to carry around for the average person. 
I cannot talk about mini cast iron sewing machines without mentioning the Singer 99. The Singer 99 is a smaller version of the Singer 66. It has a horizontal oscillating hook and it weighs 22 pounds. This particular machine is great because it has a motor that sits on the back of the machine. This way you can actually take off that particular motor and switch it out with a new motor for more torque and more power. And I think this is really great. And if you ever do find one of these machines out in the wild, then definitely scoop that thing up. Singer 185 replaced the Singer 99 and it has a lot of the exact same parts as the Singer 99. It just has some cosmetic differences. They come in jade and a tan color, which I think is really, really cute. And the motor is a 0.75 amp motor. And I just think this is a really, really great option as well. It weighs roughly 30 pounds. So that is something to keep in consideration. Brother 31 is another interesting machine that is a miniature size. It looks like it's about the same size as a Singer 99, but I don't know the exact dimensions because I haven't been able to find a ton of information on this machine online. It came in pink and purple version, which was called the Tinger. And then you had a cream color version which was called the charger and that is reminiscent of the typewriters that were out that were also called the charger then i also found a blue version of this machine and i think all three colors are very gorgeous and if you do find it out there in the wild then definitely pick it up because it does have a singer class 15 bobbin which is quite common Magnesium sewing machines were the alternative to cast iron sewing machines back in the day. The manufacturers claimed that magnesium bodied machines were much lighter weight than their cast iron counterparts. However, I have not been able to find a ton of information about these machines online because they aren't super popular. Magnesium made machines are not popular because they are super ugly machines. They're not visually attractive, but they may be attractive because of their weight. Uh, the only machine that I was able to find information about the weight on was a domestic rotary sewing machine. It weighs 20 pounds and 4 ounces, but that includes the base and the controller too. Um, it runs on a pulley drivetrain system instead of a belted motor system like what most machines run on. And that just gives you a little bit more power because you're not losing any power by the transference of that energy from the motor to the belt. And now let's talk about the aluminum body machines, which are more of an equal to the featherweight. One of my personal favorites is the Elna Supermatic. That machine weighs 18 pounds, but the metal case weighs another 10 pounds. You could take away that case that it initially came with and put it in a different case that is lighter weight. And that would be a really great option. But I think this is a good machine because the dimensions are pretty much the same as the Singer Featherweight and it is super lightweight. Another great option is to go with the Kenmore 3 4 size sewing machines. You have the 158 1040 for example. That machine weighs 17 pounds inside of the case and 15 pounds without the case. It has a variety of stitches on it so some people like it actually better than they do the Singer Featherweight itself. If you are just hell bent on getting a brand new sewing machine that is quite all right and there are a lot of good machines out there i'm not going to specifically recommend any one single model however what i will say is that you do want to look for a machine with a hard case and a place to store your foot control this is extremely extremely important because you are going to be traveling with your machine and what say you what type of machine would you get for your space? And also, what type of storage solutions would you use? Please let me know this down in the comment section below. And I really do appreciate you watching this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing related content. Peace.